Both sides of the conflict are accused of human rights abuses, but when Gaddafi shelled Benghazi, the West spoke of saving civilians. But now, Gaddafi's hometown of Sirte is under attack. What's being done about civilian safety there? Absolutely nothing has been done about civilian safety there, but that is the whole point of this NATO aggression on Libya. It's got nothing to do with pr protection of civilians, like I've been saying for the last, uh, last near six months. Sirte is still standing with Gaddafi. Banu Walid, Ben Walid, what a, what a, frankly, anyone with an ounce of humanity will see that as a heroic uh, resistance. Something like Guernica, something like Fallujah. Nothing is being done. Actually, Ben Walid is being attacked from the air by NATO and from the land by the rebels and by NATO special forces as well. So, I mean, you know, so it's absolutely right what you're implying. There's nothing being done to protect these civilians, as there's been nothing done to protect the civilians in Tripoli. Now, all due respect is to Russia today with uh, Maria uh, uh, Faneshina who has done one of the, I think, only reports about the actual reality of the situation in Tripoli, which is an absolute regime of bloody fear and, and, and domination against anyone showing any sympathy with, with Gaddafi. The journalists go to Abu Salim, go to Salahuddin and speak to the people. They dare not go there because these are mass districts, the biggest working class districts of Tripoli, which are still loyal to Gaddafi. So that visit by Sarkozy and Cameron today, many would say symbolically suggests that uh, Tripoli is indeed safe. And you would say otherwise, the security situation is very different. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I just spoke to a young lady today in Tripoli. And ev even the reports, there, there, was, there, was a, there was a firefight at the Matiga um, air, air base just on the edge of Tripoli. Mr. Jalil, the, the, you know, NATO's head guy in, in, the, in, in, the, in the rebel slave council, as I call it, to NATO, he said, he, he said in his speech to, uh, in Green Square just the other day that the Islamists will never take over. And, uh, you know, and, and he, said, he said to his rebels, do not attack the women and children. Leave them out of this, which is an admission from the NTC. It's an admission from Mr. Jalil that his rebels have been attacking women and children. All right, what about the UN then? It's convening in New York for the General Assembly. Russia is calling for the lifting now of the no-fly zone in Libya. It sees there's no purpose anymore for that. Is there any chance that NATO countries might actually do that, or do you see this campaign continuing? No, there's no way NATO countries are going to do that. I mean, the rebels have said just several months ago, if, if NATO stops its air campaign, they will lose within days. And that's the case. Now, Sarkozy and Cameron go to Benghazi. And who stands behind them? Bern Bernard Henry Levy, who is the arch French Zionist. Wherever you find this man, you will find Zionists and the West dirty plans against the countries of the global south. So really, the resistance has nowhere ended at all. Cameron and Sarkozy can grandstand all they like. A century on from 1911, after the Italian reconquest, of, of, of Libya, which uh, someone like uh, Omar al Mukhtar, who, who, who is the real great, great patriot of the Libyan resistance, here come the former colonizers of North Africa, embraced and welcomed by the NTC. What did France do to Algeria? What did Britain do to Egypt? What did Italy and all these countries do to Libya before? I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredible scandal. And really, anyone who, who thinks that the NTC have got anything to do with Omar Mukhtar really needs to think again. Omar Mukhtar fought the countries of NATO. He did not ally with them to, to invite them to bomb his own country. Just finally, you're from British Civilians for Peace in Libya. I'd like to ask you now about the perception of David Cameron there in the UK. He's being greeted by crowds in Libya. What about his standing in the UK as a result of this campaign? Yeah, quite the point. I mean, Sarkozy cannot go to the Benelux of, uh, of, 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 of Paris. And Mr. Cameron, you've got to watch your back, sir, because there's plenty of, uh, of, of gangs in London who, who, who are literally looking for your head. And if not your head, they're ready with grenades and guns. This is reported in the press. So Cameron has got, he's got a war on at home that he should be concerned about. So you're actually saying, as was uh, mentioned a while ago, that there could be retaliatory attacks by terrorists, by those who have uh, Gaddafi's interests at heart in the UK? No, this, this is a problem. This is a homegrown problem that Cameron has. But absolutely, you're right. Gaddafi is, is a person who's, who, who has support freedom fighters against the West before, in unconventional means before across the world. And he may do, do, do so again. And in terms of equalizing the conflict, that's the only option that Gaddafi really has. All right, Sukhan, thank you very much indeed. Sukhan Chandan, spokesman for British Civilians for Peace in Libya, live there in London. Thank you.